Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I'm going to talk all about the new Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner. I'm going to share all of the changes for this version compared to the old version. Spoiler alert, there aren't that many changes. And then I'm going to share five more ideas on how to use this planner. I did a very similar video last year when the new planner launched and I shared all the details of last year's planner and then I shared five ideas on how to use it. And I had such great feedback. Everybody seemed to really enjoy the ideas and the suggestions that I decided Let's just do a part two. So if you want to go see part one of that video, I will link it below. You can see those five ideas and today we're going to do five more ideas. But first, let's quickly walk through the planner, the changes from last year, and just so you can get a general sense of what this planner is. So again, this is the deluxe monthly planner for Erin Condren, which basically means it's like the life planner, except instead of weekly pages, it has additional notes pages for each month and then a ton of additional notes pages in the back. So this planner Planner is great for somebody who wants a monthly layout, a bunch of notes pages, and no weekly layouts of any kind. So all of these planners come in 12 months. There is no 18 month option for this planner and you can choose your start date anywhere from July through January of 2020. So the one I'm showing you here is a July of 2019 through June of 2020 and you can continue to pick any start date obviously until it already passed and then they'll get rid of that one. For the most part, it looks exactly like the life planner. Like this new version is basically the same thing. All the inside pages look the same. Well, there is no vellum sheet. If you saw my review of the life planner, there's a vellum sheet right here in life planner. There is not one of those, but there is a like intro page where you can write your name. And then there is the two page quote layout. Obviously you can tell I'm going through a colorful version. There are neutral versions of this planner as well. But again, this looks just like the, the life planner. This year at a glance page is exactly the same. This goal setting page, nobody really knows what to call this page, honestly. It has 12 blank boxes. New this year are these lines, which is a great addition, great change. And then we move in to the different months. So before the month starts, you have one notes page that goes with the month. Now this one's a little bit confusing because it's this gray neutral because it's the beginning of the planner. You'll notice in the future months, the color of the notes page that comes before the month matches the month. So August is yellow and this notes page has the yellow bar. Again, this one's just kind of different because it's the start of the planner. So this page used to be a doc grid in an old, old version of this planner and now it is just a lined page. And then you have the same quote page that is in the life planner. Then you have the new pages that also came in the life planner. And I saw somebody comment somewhere in a Facebook group or something saying that they hope that these pages come in the deluxe monthly and here they are. Now I'm a little bit indifferent about this and you'll see as I start going through the five new ideas I have for this planner, I don't really have as many ideas for how to use this page when it comes to using this planner. Now, if you're using this planner strictly as your normal everyday planner, which was one of the ideas from last year's video, then this page is a great addition and you probably will get a lot of use out of these. If you're using this planner for a supplemental purpose, then I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about adding these pages in. I kind of would have rather preferred some blank, more blank notes pages, honestly. Also, I still don't know how I feel about the tab not flipping to the monthly layout. I've heard some people that are really bothered by it. I honestly don't think it's gonna bother me that much. And I pointed out in some video that the, the pros of that is you no longer have this plastic piece on your monthly layout. But I do know that some people have glued these two pages together so that the tab does flip to the monthly layout. So then you have the monthly layout. Again, looks exactly the same as the life planner. This is the colorful version. And then you have the same four notes pages. So again, the color of the little hexagon in the corner matches the color for the month. So July is blue and you have just four plain lined pages. And then we get started to August. So that is the layout for every single month. Let's go ahead and flip to the back. I put a sticker here to remind me because in last year's video, I just jumped right into the five ideas and we didn't completely finish going through the planner. So once we get to the back, we have the same like future planning for 2021 that you have in the life planner, same quotes page, and then a ton, like I said, a ton of notes pages. So there are 40 notes pages included in the planner. The planner this year had a slight price increase from $38 to $40, but you did get that additional 
this additional layout every month. So that sort of explains the price increase. You can get additional notes pages in the back. For $5, you can get an additional 40 pages. Sam over at Erin Condren mentioned that now you can add different types of pages in the back. So you can add the productivity pages or you can add dot grid pages or just the lined pages. I'm not 100% sure if the prices are all gonna be the same. I assume that they are, uh, but she did not specify that. Now, the version that I'm flipping through here is the original life planner size, nine by seven or something like that. You can get the large size, like an actual notebook size for an additional $5. And then when you get to the back, you have some stickers. Compared to last year's version, the stickers come with more color options. In the old version, it was just five colors and the column was the whole, was all one color. And now you have the same stickers that come in the back of the life planner. So there's 10 different colors. You have two sheets of stickers and then the same folder, which, oh, the big pocket in the back, difference maker. So that is an overview of the planner itself. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to share five ideas on how to use this planner, five more ideas compared to the video that I did last year. And the first one that we're starting with is how I think I'm going to use, not necessarily this one. I am planning to get the larger version. So the eight and a half by 11, and I'm going to use it as a work planner. I have tried a number of different work planners over the years. I've tried a daily, I've tried an hourly, I've actually tried multiple hourlies, different brands. I've tried just a notebook. I've tried all kinds of different things. And honestly, my role has shifted to a lot less meeting heavy, which makes me feel like I don't need the hourly layouts as much, whether it's daily or weekly. So I'm gonna try a deluxe monthly and this is how I'm considering using it. So the first page, I'm gonna have like a master to-do list that I can reference back during the month and this is like all the things that I would like to get done that month. And then I'll just add as things come up, I'll move things to the next month if I don't get to them, etc. This page I'm probably not gonna use, honestly, and I'm probably just gonna glue it together. That way the tab does go to the month and I don't have to, I don't have to deal with it. It is a bummer to lose pages and like you're paying additional for the pages, but I think that's probably what I'll do in my work planner. Then in the monthly overview, I'm just gonna have a, the month at a glance, just major meetings that I have, not meetings that I have scheduled every single week. Like, like those half hour, hour meetings that I have every single week, I don't need to put them here. But if I have a major meeting coming up, I wanna know if my boss is gonna be out of town, I wanna know if I'm gonna be out of the office, I probably know that, but I'm gonna mark it here. Just again, sort of a month at a glance. And then I'm gonna use the notes pages for meeting notes. And I think having the notes pages that are behind the month will make it easier to go back and find things if I remember what month the meeting was. And I'm thinking this is specifically not, again, for meetings that are every single week. These are for meetings that are just that month, like a one-time, one-off meeting. And then in the back, I'm gonna use notes pages for other meetings, and I'm thinking, we'll see how this works out, that that is a good place for meetings that do happen every single week. So what I'll do is I'll take a notes page, and then at the top, I'll put like, blah, 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 meeting that happens to be every week. And then I'll take notes for that same meeting on the same page and like leave a couple of pages, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm gonna try. We'll see how that works. But I do think that this might be a good option for a work planner. Now I have not decided yet if I'm gonna do the colorful or the neutral. Obviously a neutral makes way more sense for a work planner and had it been last year's neutral scheme I probably would have gone neutral but again I don't I don't love that pastel <laughs> I'm not gonna keep reminding you of that so I might just go ahead and do colorful honestly and if people see it I'm gonna be like well yes I just people at work know I'm a colorful person my desk is very very colorful so I don't think it's that big of a deal idea number two is to use this as a wellness planner I haven't actually tried this myself but this was just an idea I had because I have tried basically every type of wellness planner and nothing has totally sticked. The longest thing I've ever stuck with is the Erin Condren like petite planner, wellness planner. And that does usually work well for me for a while, but then I fall off of it. But anyways, I don't know that I'm going to try this one, but I thought that this might be a good idea for somebody who really wants to track their health and wellness on a more detailed level. And a weekly layout is probably a little bit too much and having the extra notes pages could be very beneficial. So on this first page, I would probably put measurements of sorts. I would maybe split this up into four columns and do something each week and have like, you know, weight, arms, legs, blah, 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 et cetera. And then on this page, I would probably put some sort of photos 
just to motivate, inspire me, whether it's my own photos or just inspirational photos of an outfit I wanna wear or who knows what, somebody I like want to stay healthy for. Like if you have kids or grandkids, like this could be a great like motivational kind of dashboard. On this page, I would probably do some sort of goals. So you could break this down into like monthly, weekly, and daily goals. So the things that are related to health and wellness that you want to accomplish for the month or each week or each day. For me, for the monthly layout, I would probably put my Apple Watch stats here. So I don't have it on right now, but I do love my Apple Watch and it really does motivate me to move my body and make sure that I'm getting enough movement during the day, not even necessarily exercise. And so I would probably put my Apple Watch stats here in each box and just sort of track the days. And I, at one point in one of my many wellness planners, I was using the mild liner highlighters and I was marking like whether it was a green day or a yellow day or a red day, like whether it was really good or, or medium or it wasn't a good day. I've also seen where people in their normal life planners do like each workout that they do on the day and that you could practice your lettering or you can make it look really pretty. You could also put photos here. There's a lot you could do with the, the monthly layout. And then on the notes pages, I would probably put some sort of food tracking. So the nice thing about there being four notes pages is you really can break it up into each week. There's going to be some month where there's five weeks and that doesn't work out perfectly, but hear me out. You could do each week has a page and you could set it up however you want, however you want to track your food, whether that is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or whether it's proteins, carbs, and fats, or whatever it is, you could set it up to track it. And then in the back notes pages, I would probably keep recipes and grocery lists. So things that you want to refer back to, but you don't necessarily need to have within your month. Okay, idea number three is to use it as a travel planner. So I sort of took this idea, thanks Nina for lending me your idea from Nina. She uses the petite planner, the monthly layout petite planner. And I was thinking that it could be really cool to use the deluxe monthly to map out all your travel if you're somebody that does travel a lot. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't travel, obviously this doesn't really apply to you, but her and her fiance are currently doing long distance. So they're both traveling a lot. So my thought was, if you use this for travel, I would use this page as things you need to make sure you do every single trip, kind of like a, a master checklist. And then you could put the trips across the top and then the, the tasks along the side. Some of them are gonna be the same for everybody, right? Like make a pack list, pack, check in for your flight. I even go further back than that, book flight, book hotel, etc. Some of them are gonna differ for everybody. So for me, I would have like, make sure Charlie has a cat sitter, if if applicable. Obviously, if Sam's not going with me, he can watch Charlie. But if we're both going, I need to get somebody to watch Charlie. Maybe you need a house sitter. Maybe you need to make sure you do specific things in your house so that it's ready to go. So I just feel like having a master to-do list of everything you need to do before you travel would be a great idea here. Then this layout, I would probably do some sort of memory keeping from the trips. You could cover up these little boxes and you could put the name of the trip, the location, or you could just kind of do a hodgepodge of pictures and different mementos, like if you got a ticket stub or whatever. And then on the monthly layout would just be an overall schedule. And I think it would be valuable to include things like make sure that your hotel is booked, make sure that you check in for your flight. You can include things for future trips as well, like start looking at flights here or whatever it is and use it sort of as an overall schedule. And then the notes page, I would do like information for each trip. So your hotel information, your flight information, if you're going on a tour, like what the reservation number is and do you need cash to tip the tour guide or whatever, all the information you could do a page or two pages per trip. Again, I know that not everybody travels that much, so this idea is very specific to somebody who travels a lot, but if you or your significant other, or both of you travel a lot, this could be very, very valuable. And then in the back, I would put things like packing lists. So again, things that you want to be able to refer back to. You could also do that here and flip that around and write and put packing lists here and then info in the back. And then you could also put more mementos, more pictures, a little bit more memory keeping. That sort of leads us into idea number four, which is to use this as a memory keeping planner. I posted on Instagram a couple of, I don't know, maybe it was like a week or two ago, asking how people use their deluxe monthly planner. And a lot of the responses I got, I covered in last year's idea video, those five ideas. I had already sort of brainstormed some ideas to include in this video, one of them being memory keeping. So when Katie responded, and said that she used her deluxe monthly for memory keeping, 
I asked her if she would be comfortable sharing details, if she would be comfortable sharing how she uses it, what she uses the different pages for, and then even pictures if she was willing. And so she was so, so generous and sent me an email of all of the details that she uses her memory keeping deluxe monthly planner for. On this page, we both sort of had the same idea, which is to use it for miscellaneous pictures. So you'll see as we get further on in the idea where you would put like trip memory keeping or a larger event that you have lots of pictures from. So my thought was this is where I would put like those one off pictures, like the one time date night or the one time picture of Charlie that I thought was really cute. Now what Katie said she does, and I'll pop a picture up here, is that she gets her pictures printed from the EC website. So Erin Condren has these custom photo stickers where you can upload all of your own photos and you can get stickers printed out. And she mentioned in her email, she was like, there's probably a cheaper way to do this, but that's what works for me. And that she also mentioned, which is a great tip, that it forces her to go through her photos and get rid of like duplicates and photos that she isn't going to use. So I decided to go ahead and price it out. So, so the Erin Condren sticker sheets are $5.50. Now they are considered accessories. So if you're getting other accessories or you're getting more than one of these, they you can't get 15% off. But for the sake of comparison, we're including no discounts in either scenario. So for $5.50, you get 15, which is 37 cents per picture. And those are one and a half by 1.9 inches across. So it's more of a vertical shaped sticker and it is made to fit in the full boxes of the vertical. They're a little bit smaller than the ones that I get printed at the drugstore. So I talked about this in my memory keeping video, but I get my pictures printed at the drugstore and I turn them into a collage and then get just a normal four by six photo printed because that's the cheapest. So a four by six photo at the drugstore is 33 cents. And then I will put either four or six photos on a layout, depending on if I can fit them into squares or if they need to be rectangles. So they need to be rectangles, you can only get four, but those are gonna be big. Those are gonna be two by three, or I do six little squares. I hope this is making sense. I, I'm gonna link my memory keeping video if you want more information on the photo concept. Obviously the drugstores are gonna be a lot cheaper. The drugstore also is gonna be a lot faster because you can get those printed same day, but the EC ones come on stickers already. So you don't have to deal with like adhesive rollers on the back or pay for adhesive rollers on the back. So again, both great options. I think I would put pictures here and those are two ways that you can get pictures printed in some form or fashion to put in your planner. All right, so now we have this layout and, and since this one is new, she obviously hasn't had time to play with this or figure out what she's going to use this for yet. I was thinking that this would be good for specific events. So, so like if you had a specific event that you went to, you could cover up this thing that said birthday. Like for example, last month I went to a chili cook-off. So I put a sticker here, I'd write chili cook-off and then I'd put all the pictures that we took at the chili cook-off in this little box kind of thing. Okay, so then we have the monthly overview and what Katie said that she uses this for is sort of um, at a glance. So I'll pop up a picture here. So she said that she uses the Erin Condren monthly sticker books and she plans out her month with any big events and things that are planned, which is actually very similar to what I do in my normal planner, like on the monthly layout on my normal planner is that's sort of how I do that. And then I will add pictures as sort of memory keeping as well. But again, since she's using this strictly for memory keeping, she can make things a little bit bigger and a little bit more decorative. I was also thinking that this could be a really great space to do like a one line per day, whether it's something that you're grateful for, something good that happened, something that you're excited about, or just a journal, like just a thought per day, you could use a little box and write one sentence per day. All right, and then we have the notes pages. So, so what Katie said she uses these notes pages for is journaling a meaningful experience daily or most days. Sometimes she just needs to get it out and it's a little bit more of a brain dump. And she likes that it's not like, super specific. So if she wants to just write one sentence, that's okay. If she runs out of room, then she moves to the notes pages in the back. I was thinking that this also could be great for those other events. So if you have an event that has a lot of extra memory keeping stuff, like for example, I just went on my anniversary trip. We went camping. I collected a ton of little like business cards from stuff and different things and like the tags that they put on our bags and all kinds of little mementos. So it's probably not going to fit on this page because again, I, I have way more pictures and way more mementos. So I would probably use maybe two notes pages, I don't know, maybe even three. So I figured that could be a good use for the notes pages because then it's specifically contained within that month that it happened. And in the back, again, more journaling, more specific events. Some events need way more than four pages. Like if I was adding Go Wild to a memory keeping planner, if I was using this instead of the little Erin Condren notebook, I would need lots of pages. Idea number five is to use this as an extended meal planner. So 
I sort of developed this idea from watching Sam from Happily a Housewife, but she talked about this years ago. She doesn't do it so much anymore, but she used to meal plan for an entire month. Amazing. Like I can't even fathom how she does that. But when you have a family and you're trying to plan and keep on top of it, like I can definitely see the value in it. So I was sort of thinking that this could be a great meal planner. Now, even if you do plan only weekly, it still could be a great meal planner. So hear me out. I was thinking the first page could be an inventory list. So you would fill this out at the beginning of the month with everything that's in your pantry, your fridge, and your freezer that you need to use with maybe like a date or maybe just separate it by section, fridge, fr pantry, freezer, or whatever it is, that all the things that you need to use up. And then when you're meal planning, you can reference this to make sure that you're using it up. And then when you go to the next month, you can transfer over anything that you didn't end up using. Once again, I'm not really sure how I would use these pages in relation to this idea. So I would probably just glue them together and just call it a day. I mean, you could maybe use it if you had like a specific dinner party or a specific meal you were planning out, but I'm not really sure. And then the monthly layout would just be the meal plan. So you would meal plan for your entire month. Now, again, you could do that like Sam used to talk about at the very beginning of the month where you planned out the whole month. Or you could also just do it by week. And you could put things down as they get scheduled in advance so that would sort of help you with the future planning. Like, for example, if you have a dinner out, you know, this Friday, even when you're meal planning the week or two before, you know that this is going to be a meal out and that might change things. All right. And then the notes pages I was thinking would be really great for grocery lists. So again, you could use one per week, like one notes page per week, or you could just, you know, break it up as you need. I just feel like having the grocery list to reference what you got during that month compared to what you ate would be valuable. In the back, I would include things like recipes. You could either write them out or you could print them out and glue them in. Notes on those different recipes, maybe even pictures. I added an extra sticky later because I thought there are some recipes that I like having pictures of later. Nutritional facts for that recipe that you made. Maybe if you if you came up with a recipe that you really liked and you adapted it from like a website, but you don't wanna to have to measure it out every time you make that recipe. So you kind of jot it down and have it saved. Okay, I have one more bonus number six for you. And I didn't want to include it as one of the five because I do feel like it's very specific, but it is how I think I might use this one. And so I just wanted to share it with you again. I didn't include it as one of the five because I know it's very specific to me. And that is to track my clothing. So I've mentioned this in a number of vlogs, but I use Rent the Runway Unlimited, which means I get four items at a time. And most of the time I'm renting some sort of work attire, things that I can wear to work. But then when I have fun events, I like to rent fun things as well. And while I do remember sometimes the things that I really like, and I can go back and look at the size that I ordered, like in my history, I don't always necessarily remember how it fit. Was it slightly too tight and should I have ordered up? Or was it slightly too big and maybe next time I need to order down? So I thought about having a place that I can kind of track all of that would be really helpful. So let me walk you through it. <laughs> you can tell me if I'm crazy and if this is just a little bit too much, but on this page, I would probably put photos. So either photos of me in the outfits, outfits that I want to wear, inspiration, kind of those kinds of things. Again, this page I would probably just glue together. I don't know what I would use that page for. We're going to skip it. So this page I would use in a number of different ways. So I would use it for future planning. So events that I have coming up and things that I plan to wear. So for example, I just got a delivery last night and I got three things in it. And so I would probably write down like, okay, I'm going to wear this one Wednesday, this one Thursday, and this one Friday. And I'm going to base that on the meetings that I have at work, outfits I like the best, and the plans that I have after work. And then after I wore them, I would go back and like maybe make notes or write that I wore them. I can make sure that I'm not wearing the same thing to the same meeting. I guess if that is important, I can mark whether I have future events coming up that I need to make sure I run stuff for. I, obviously I know when I have events coming up, but sometimes it's nice to visually see how much time there is. I do get things pretty quickly in New York from Rent the Runway, but it's still nice to sort of start getting them further in advance so that I can make sure that I really like them. So for example, I have Plantation in Arizona in three weeks. It's still a little bit early for me to start thinking about ordering stuff for it, but it would be nice to be able to visually see like, okay, that event is coming up. All right, and then in the notes section, I would just write details on what I rented. What did I like about it? What did I accessorize it with? How was the fabric? Blah, 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 blah. Things that I know I want to remember that I can't tell from just looking at my account on the website. And then in the back, 
I don't, I didn't really have any fabulous ideas for the back notes pages, but maybe some inspiration boards. I can mark my favorite items, like have a list going of like the, my favorites. One day I'd like to purchase some of the items that are my favorites. You can probably tell which ones are my favorites by the number of times that I've ordered them, but just another place to track all that information. Maybe I would also track like what I already own in my wardrobe. And so I'm not like duplicating things. Again, the idea is a little bit out there and it is very specific to me and my situation, but I wanted to share it with you because I think I think I might try it. I think that might be what I use this for. So those are my five ideas for how to use this Deluxe Monthly Planner. Again, I had five different ideas last year. If you did not see that video, go check that one out. But it was very early on in my YouTube journey, okay? So don't judge me too harshly, but the ideas are still great and still very applicable. If you use your deluxe monthly planner for something else, please let us know in the comments. I think that these planners are a great option from Erin Condren. They are great to use just as your normal planner if you don't need a weekly layout, but they're also great for a lot of supplemental planning. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. Then you have the brand new, mm, what is my problem this morning? Original life-size, life-size version. I was using the um, mild liner high, my, 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 my. some of them are going to be same. The, 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 the. Let's try that again. So it's a more of a vertical shaped planner and not planner for is, is she, blah, 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 blah.